you, Lord, for the small things Like me and her on a porch swing For summer nights and fireflies And the sound of my old six string Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings If I still got breath in these lungs And that's all I need to get down on my knees And be thankful for all that he's done For my mama, for my friends For your love that never ends For the songs that make us dance On this old dirt floor For my babies, for my girl For the way they changed my world You're waking up today Yeah, I just gotta say Thank you, Lord Yeah, I just wanna say Thank you, Lord times, for lighting the way in the dark times, for pulling me in, for giving again, the times that I took it too far, I gotta thank you for keeping me humble, for picking me up when I stumble, and although I change, you stay the same, and I don't say thank you enough, for my mama, for my friends, for your love that never ends, for the songs that make us dance on this old dirt floor, for my babies, for my girl, for the way they change my world, waking up today, yeah, I just gotta say thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise up, eyes closed. One thing I know. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For my mama, for my friends, for your love that never ends, for the songs that make us dance on this old dirt floor.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. I praise and thank God for this privilege and the opportunity to be with you this morning. I'm so excited because of the fact that it has been over four months now since we last saw each other at our church corporate service. I can only pretend and imagine myself standing before you. To those who don't know me, my name is Verhel Tayag Sr., married to Angie Tayag for 43 years. And happy to say that we celebrated our wedding anniversary last June. I thank and praise God for the way He blessed our marriage and continue to strengthen our relationship. He blessed us with three sons, Eric, Chris, and Junior. We thank God for Mississauga Family Baptist Church, which we have been a member for almost more or less 20 years now. And indeed a blessing to me because God enabled me and my family to serve in His ministry. I have been a member of the Board of Elders and such a privilege and honor to serve Him this way. My wife, Angie, served as a bookkeeper, and I'm happy to tell you that we are both retired now from our secular jobs after almost 30 years. Like many of you, God blessed us with good jobs. I had the opportunity to work at the city of Mississauga and Angie at FedEx. I thank God for all the strength and the good health throughout those years. God is so good as many as my family continues to rely upon Him. We continue to enjoy His goodness and faithfulness in our lives, strengthened and always reminded by His words in Psalm 31, 19. How abundant are good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. God taught me so much in life, and the one of the things that I have learned and continue to live is to be contented in everything He provides on a daily basis. And as a result, His goodness and faithfulness continue to manifest in our lives. I'm being reminded by the song, Count Your Blessing, Name them one by one. Like many of us, God is blessing us so much that I can only name a few. Other than good jobs, He blessed us with three wonderful sons, three beautiful daughters-in-law, and five adorable grandkids. There's not enough words to express how thankful we are, but to remain humble and obedient, and more importantly, to always give glory to Him. We are so privileged and blessed to be members that serve the Church as a family. The year 2020 is indeed a unique one and very challenging year to all of us. During these difficult times of pandemic, we must always remind ourselves that God is in control, having that assurance that He is on our side. Yes, we are not particularly exempted from these unprecedented circumstances, and therefore we should take all the precautionary measures and stay vigilant in the way we interact with people, and most of all, follow the protocol, laws, and regulations enforced by our government. We acknowledge that God is absolutely in control in everything that is happening in this world we live in. Even though we are being overwhelmed or shadowed or swallowed by our circumstances, that we must continue to remain strong in our faith and our lives for God. Let us continue to show and share our Christian lives 
and testimonies to others on what God is doing in our lives and families during this difficult time of pandemic. Lastly, I would like to leave you with this reminder from Pastor David Jeremiah. Shout of joy and happiness are available to us now, but we can only find them in the teaching of Jesus Christ. A relationship with Him is the fountainhead of joy. Remember today that He wants us to be blessed. Rejoice. Be good of cheer. Let all those who know Him shout for joy. Thank you and God bless. And hoping to see you all soon. Bye for now. Hello and good morning everyone. As always, we welcome you to another Sunday morning worship service um, digitally with the Mississauga Family Baptist Church. And um, although once again, we are physically distanced and not physically present, uh, we are all spiritually connected and we are all one body and we are grateful for each and every one of you that are tuning in today. It has been a while since we've been able to physically greet each other. So every now and then I'd like to, to request that you take a moment to, to think of somebody that you haven't spoken to in a while. Think of someone at the church that you'd, you'd like to greet to, or to, to bless this morning and maybe send them a quick message, a quick good morning, a quick God bless you, something to let them know that you're thinking of them. We are a family and um, just like with any family, when it's been a while since we've you know, we've been in contact. Uh, it's nice, It's always nice to, to hear from someone that you love. So I encourage you to do that. And I encourage you, as we do every Sunday, to just prepare our hearts and our minds and our voices to, to sing to our Lord this morning and to just be in his presence. I was buried my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my dream yeah. Till I made You called my name And I ran out of that place Out of the dark Come on, listen. 
you all to take a moment to bow your heads with me as we pray to our God this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your presence today. We thank you for your love, for your grace. We thank you that you have overcome all adversity in this world, that you have overcome the grave and all the trials and tribulations that we may face, God. You have given us your comfort. We, we pray that may you just Fill us today with your Holy Spirit, that may we just hear your word, Father, and be changed by it and, and be inspired by it. That may you just teach us, Father, through your messenger and through your message. We thank you, God, um, that uh, you are our Father, our protector, our provider, and we just commit to you this time, Father, as we honor you today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. I'm very glad to be with you this morning because uh, it's almost a year now. Last year I was diagnosed with cancer, leukemia, and uh, that was a shock to me and to my family as well. My holiday was just over and I was getting ready to go back to work when uh, suddenly I got that uh, sad news. I seek the Lord, I prayed for forgiveness, I prayed for healing, I surrendered my future into His hand and will. 
I, uh, and then I went through a series of chemotherapy. And last uh, January, January of this year, I had my bone marrow transplant. I had uh, several complications. Some are serious and very painful. I'm not uh, fully healed yet. I don't know what the Lord has in store for me in the future, but I am very thankful that uh, He gave me another year. And now I am here with you to share with you the Word of God. The title of our, our message this morning is Forgiveness and Healing, and our text is coming from uh, Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen, and I will read that. I will read that. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that we have a God who loves us. And Lord, we pray that uh, as we study your word this morning, your Holy Spirit will be with us to guide us, to lead us, and that you will give us illumination and understanding of your word. Our prayer, Lord, is that uh, you will be glorified and we will be sanctified. Lord, we praise you. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We want to lift you, your name. We exalt your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Forgiveness and healing. That's our title for the message this morning. And there are three things I would like you to keep in mind as we study this word. First, I want you to know that uh, the context of this uh, text is uh, the dedication of the temple. Solomon prayed the dedication and then God answered his prayers. So three things in mind, three things to keep in mind. First, it is an answer to Solomon's prayer in chapter 6. And it is a conditional prayer meaning for the recipient of the blessing to receive the promise the blessing of the promise, the recipient must do something. The recipient of the blessing must meet the conditions of the promise. The third one we must keep in mind is the prom this promise is a promise of blessings and also there is a warning of afflictions. Our text says, it's my, if my people who are called by my name who are these people who are called by the name of God? The people of God, the recipient of the promise. These are the ancient Israelite, the ancient Israel. They are the covenant people of God. Israel is a covenant nation. They are the original recipient of this promise. We, the Gentile nation, Canada, America, Philippines, and all other nations are not covenant nation like Israel. If Israel had to fulfill the condition for divine blessings, we, the Gentiles, has no unbreakable claim on the blessings from God. God had no covenant promise with Gentile nation. God had made no promise to our ancestors that guarantees our national status. So why do Christian believers claim this passage in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14? In almost every revival meeting, Christians claim this promise. Are we entitled to this? Are we, do we have the right to claim this promise? Let us settle that question first before we can continue with the promise. So I would like you to go to Galatians chapter 3. And we will read from verse 26. 
Galatians chapter 3. Verse 26. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you are in Christ, then you are sons of God, son of God, and heirs to the promise. All the promise of salvation, mercy, forgiveness of sins, and spiritual prosperity are ours to claim as long as we remain faithful to God. As long as we remain faithful to God, we can claim all those. I would also would like you to go to Romans chapter 9 and let us read from verse 24. Even us whom he also called not only from the Jews but also from the Gentiles. As he says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people and I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. Verse 26. And it will happen that in the very place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. That is Romans 24, Romans chapter 9, verse 24 to 26, that tells us that we are God's people and children if we are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, even us whom he called from the Gentile nation. God called us my people, my loved one, my children. That is the beauty of the gospel. That is the power of the gospel. First, it saved us and made us people of God. Then it transformed us to become a new creation, a child of God, a recipient of his promise, a recipient of his blessing. If you are listening today, this morning, but you're not sure if you are saved. You are not sure if you can even claim the promises of God in His Word. If you are not sure, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believe in what He did on the cross for you, that He died for you to pay for your sin. And receive Him as your Lord and Savior. And He will give you the right to become children of God. God will call you my people, my children, children of God. That is the reason Christian claim this promise. We are God's people. We can claim this promise if you are in Christ Jesus, if you are a believer. Now, let us continue. Our text, verse 14, implies that God's people becomes arrogant. They lost their seriousness in their prayer. They're not fervent in their prayer anymore. They don't seek God anymore. They become wicked in their ways, in the way they live their life. They become disobedient and idolater. They, they disobey God. They were, they were arrogant and wicked. They abandoned God and worship other God. They are prayerless and not seeking God anymore. Our nephew Jacob is a three and one half years old. He stayed in our house for three months. He is so cute and loving. He will give you many kisses and says, I love you, he will hug you, wherever I go he follows. But when he wants something or wants to do something that I don't allow, he will go away from me. He won't talk to me, he will not listen to me. Sometimes children are like that, when they don't get what they want, they will abandon you. 
or when they are busy doing something they really like to do, they will ignore you. And as children of God, we sometimes do the same. We become too busy with our own things and we forget about God. We don't pay attention to Him anymore. We lost our fervency in our prayer, our seriousness. We're not earnest anymore. We pursue our desire and dreams, even sometimes breaking some godly principles. Why? Because we don't want to lose the opportunity to get what we want at that time. We want something and we want it now. We want it and we want it now. We cannot wait. We don't think of the consequences of our doings. We don't wait for God anymore. That is the sin of the people in these passages. They become disobedient and idolater. Even King Solomon. In verse 17 of chapter 7, Second Chronicles, verse 17 to 20, he was warned by God. And yet, you can see in First King chapter 11, that he loved women and he intermarried with the women of other nations the things that they were prohibited from doing they were told in, from before that they should not marry the women of their neighbors because they will turn their hearts after other gods but Solomon did not follow that and later, when he, is a when he is older, much older, he followed other gods. That is in First King chapter 11, verse 5 to 10. Every sin has consequences. Every sin has consequences. Several days after the dedication of the temple, God appeared to Solomon. God answered, Solomon's prayer of dedication in chapter 6. He made a lengthy prayer, prayer request in chapter 6 and God answered that in chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles. And I would like you to go back to chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles and we will go up to verses from our text. We will read from 2 Chronicles Chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. And in verse 13, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people. When I shut up the heavens, that's what uh, God said. Notice the word when. God did not say if, he said when, meaning that it is just a matter of time, but it will come. The consequences, the consequences of their sin will come. The Lord shut up the heavens. There will be drought. There's no rain. So drought, pestilence, plagues of locusts or grasshoppers, things that affects their livelihood. Plagues, any calamity, any large calamity. When God sent locusts to devour the land, all inhabitants, all the inhabitants suffered. 
But we ask, why would God send drought? Why would God send disaster, affliction, and pain to his people? Why? Why would he do that? Why did he do that? Remember, this passage is answered to Solomon's prayer in chapter 6. And it will be good for us to go back to chapter 6 to see why. I want you to go back to chapter 6 of Second Chronicles and we will read from verse 26. Verse 26. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you and when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their weak and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them. When the heavens are shut up because your people have sinned. See, that is one reason. The heaven was shut up and there is no rain because these people sin against God. They sin. And look, what it's also tell us. Because you have afflicted them, because God have afflicted them, they turn from their sin. Because God have afflicted them, they give praise to His name. And because God have afflicted them, they pray. See, afflictions bring God's people back to the Lord. They pray, they give praise to Him, and they turn from their sin. That's why affliction is being sent to His people from time to time when we forget about God. In verse 28 and 29, When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when enemies besiege them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come. And when a prayer or plea is made by any of your people Israel, each one aware of his affliction and pains, and is spreading out his hand toward this temple. Verse 28 and 29. It says, these people being aware of their affliction and pains, they are aware, they are experiencing it, the suffering, being aware of that. What did they do? They pray and plead with God. When they are aware, when they are suffering affliction and pains, they plead and pray with God. They pray and plead and look. They even spread out their hands toward the, toward the temple, toward God. They even praise and worship. I think we, people of God, really need affliction and pain sometimes so that we will go back to God, so that we will praise Him so that we will pray earnestly, so that we will turn from our sin. Let us not wait for disaster. Let us not wait for more afflictions and pain. Let us return to God, brothers, sisters. Let, let us pray. Let us plead with God. Let us worship Him. Let us praise Him and Him alone. There is a guy named Dr. Darrell Bach. He is a theologian and professor at Dallas Theological Seminary. He notes this. He says this. Plagues are a way that God seek, seeks to get our attention 
about our finitude and mortality as well as how we are giving attention to God. Plagues are God's way to get our attention so that we will pay attention to our finitude, our being finite. We are limited in our abilities. We are limited in our knowledge. We are limited in our power. God wants us to focus on that. Always see that, that we are finite being. Also, mortality. We have to pay attention to that. God wants us to pay attention to that. That's why he's in plagues. The pandemic alone, this pandemic, this COVID-19, the last time I checked on the news, 700,000 people already, already died of the COVID-19. We are mortals. We can die anytime. My brothers and sisters and God sent plagues so that we will focus our attention on that so that we will focus our attention on our finitude and mortality he also want us to see how are we giving attention to him how are we giving attention to God we have to look at that. Dr. Darrell Bach also says that plagues are an opportunity for reflection about how we live. It is an opportunity for reflection about how we live our life. A time for us to reflect about how we live. He also said that it, it is a reminder that we are not God ourselves. We are not God. We are not God. So don't live like one. Live as a children of God, as a people of God. Brothers and sisters, because of disobedience and idolatry in our heart, in our hearts, God from time to time sent us some spiritual droughts, hardships, and troubles. We don't, what we don't realize is that the consequences of our sin affect the people around us. Everyone around us. When God sent drought, pestilence, and plagues to, to his people, the whole nation suffers. Everyone who live in the land, everyone who live with us in our houses and communities. Sometimes the consequences of sin can affect even the future generation. Our children's children and their children. That is what happened to Sarah and Abraham. Sarah can't wait, so she gave her maid servant Hagar to Ishmael, to Abraham. Hagar conceived and gave birth to Ishmael. They did not wait for God. And the consequence is a problem they have to suffer and still suffering until now. Consequences of sin. Even King Solomon, he was told that his kingdom will be divided in 1 King chapter 11. He was told in 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 20, that the people will be uprooted from the land and will go captives. Verse 20 to 21 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, he was told that the temple will be destroyed if he is disobedient and if he worship other God. The Lord promised 
Solomon that the king that he will tear the kingdom from him in first king 11 verse 11 so after the death of king solomon the kingdom was divided only one tribe was left to his son rehoboam the southern kingdom the ten tribes of uh, the northern kingdom was taken by jeroboam jeroboam became the king of northern kingdom people of God continued in their disobedience and idolatry throughout the kingdom period and eventually was sent captives to Babylon. Solomon temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. What did God promise his people in our text? God promised forgiveness and healing. Forgiveness and healing. From time to time, God brings disaster to his people. And people ask why. Why? Why him? Why them? They are God's people. Why would God send disaster, plagues to his people? God already answered that in verse 21 to 22 of Second Chronicles chapter 7. In verse 21, verse 21 of chapter 7, this is what it reads. Verse 21. And though this temple is now so imposing, all who pass by will be appalled and say, Why has the Lord done such a, th such a thing to this land and to this temple? And people will answer, Because they have forsaken the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought, who brought them out of Egypt and have embraced other gods. Worshipping, worshipping and serving them. That is why he brought all this, this disaster on them. Because these people abandoned God. They have forsaken the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of Egypt and embraced other gods. Embraced other gods. Worshipping and serving them, worshiping and serving them. There are times in the believer's life that we get sidetracked. We abandon the one who delivers us from all our troubles. Think of the past. Think of how the Lord has delivered you in all your troubles. We serve and worship other God when we forget God. It could be anything we give ourselves into. Whatever we treasure more than God become our God. Whatever drives our thoughts and action become our idols. It becomes our idols. Do you have idols? Do you have idols? Can you identify it in your life? Try to identify it in your life. Try to see if you are worshipping other God. If you have idols, try to find out. Identify it in your life. Brothers and sisters, we need forgiveness and healing. Even healing for our land. Who would have known or thought that we will experience this pandemic? in our lifetime. Who would have thought that we will experience this? Our text says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my pace and turn from their wicked ways, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 
God is calling all the believers in the world. God is calling His people to humble themselves before God, to pray earnestly with fervency, with ardor, with love for God. Serious prayer. Serious prayer. Seek God's face and Him alone. Let us turn from our sin. Let us repent, brother and sister. Turn from our sin. And then, He can forgive us. He can heal us and our land. Brother and sister, with what is going on in our world today, we need this more than ever before. We need this more than ever before. Repent. Repent. Pray. Humble yourself before the mighty hands of God. Pray. Seek His face. Turn from your wicked ways. And let the Lord forgive us and heal our land. Heal our sickness. Heal our sickness. Let us pray. Father God, we praise you and thank you. Thank you for the reminder that we should come back to you, Lord. That we should seek your face. That we should humble ourselves before you. Thank you for the reminder, Lord, that we are finite, be finite being. We are mortals. We are only mortals. And you are God. Thank you for your promise. The, the promise of, of forgiveness and the promise of healing. We praise you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
thank you so much for joining in our worship service for today. It's a loud amen to our morning worship. Praying that Sunday after Sunday, during our worship service, will encourage each one of us. And also, let's give God the glory. Thank you for your continuous prayer for one another and supporting our church ministries. I want to let you know, my beloved in the Lord, that in spite of our current financial condition, we are continuing supporting our missionaries financially. And thank you so much for those who continue to give online giving and also for those who are dropping off their uh, envelope, their tithes envelope in the church. Let's pray that the Lord will continue to bless each one of us as also we bless the Lord's work. At the same time, let us continue to pray for one of our missionaries in Lebanon, Bechara Karkafi. Let's pray that the Lord will be with them and other church workers in, in that place. Hoping and praying as well that we'll see you soon. Let's pray that the Lord will continue to lead us and give us guidance, especially for the church leadership. Let us come to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father God, we thank you for your words for today. Thank you for using Pastor Deo as your messenger. Thank you for using him, O oh Lord. And also we thank you for touching our lives in ways we cannot explain in spite of this pandemic. You have taken us to your realms of glory and we want to say thank you. And today as we end our worship, we ask that you continue to be, in, to be with us, O oh Lord, to our family, to our children. Grace and mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you and God bless you all. Have a blessed and wonderful week. Amen.